Welcome to the next video in the evolution unit. This video will be looking at life on earth.8.4.31, describe technological advances that have increased knowledge of prokaryotic organisms. So up to now we've looked at technology that has helped us to understand how life on earth has evolved. Now we're looking specifically at technology that has helped to increase our knowledge of prokaryotic organisms. So before we begin, what are prokaryotic cells? You may have noticed that in my heading here, I've spelt prokaryotic with a K, the syllabus spells it with a C, interchangeable, it doesn't really matter which way you spell it. But let's have a look at some characteristics of prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells are simple and small. They're unicellular, however, they can join together to form colonies. The main thing that we need to know is that they have no membrane bound organelles. So they have no nucleus, they have no mitochondria, they have no chloroplast. DNA is a single chromosome in the cytoplasm of our prokaryotes and condensed into what we call a nucleoid. So unlike us, we are eukaryotes and our DNA is found inside our nucleus. In prokaryotes, the DNA is just condensed together in the cytoplasm in the form of a nucleoid. Prokaryotic cells are smaller than eukaryotic cells because they are much simpler. They're not as complex. They don't have the structured organelles within them like eukaryotic cells do. They have a complex cell wall. They contain small ribosomes, which as we know are able to undergo protein synthesis. The cells themselves undergo binary fission rather than mitosis. So binary fission is a process of asexual reproduction where we produce two identical cells from our one cell, but it's a slightly different process than mitosis. And our prokaryotic cells have simple appendages. So in particular, a lot of prokaryotic cells have what we call a flagella, which is sort of like a tail, which helps it to move around its environment. So if we have a look at this picture here, it shows us a really nice clear comparison between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. So in our eukaryotic cells, we can see that eukaryotes have a true nucleus. It has a membrane around it and the DNA is enclosed within that nucleus and it is protected. So one way to remember it is eukaryotes have a true nucleus, prokaryotes do not have a true nucleus. So you true, that might be one way to help you to uh, remember that. As we can see as well, our eukaryotes have a mitochondria, also membrane bound organelle where respiration takes place. Our prokaryotic cells don't have a nucleus, so the DNA is found in a nucleoid. The cell wall, which some eukaryotes such as plant cells have, but all prokaryotes have a cell wall. And as we can see there, there's the flagella or the tail like structure. So what are some technological advances that have helped us to understand what these prokaryotic organisms are. So firstly, the light microscope. As we know, back in the 1600s, simple light microscopes were produced, and this enabled us to identify organisms as being unicellular and small. So obviously, before the light microscope came along, we could only see things that were big enough to be able to visually see with our naked eye. But now we could see organisms that were as small as up to one micrometer in diameter. We were also able to identify the presence of a cell membrane and the cell wall in our prokaryotes. The electron microscope then in the 1930s enabled us to see the finer details within the cell, such as the lack of a nuclear membrane and any other membrane bound organelles. We also could see that the presence of a single strand DNA and small ribosomes existed rather than the complex DNA within the nucleus that we see in our eukaryotes. We could also see that cell division does not take place by mitosis, but through the process of binary fission. Then we had the introduction of chemical analysis, which then took it a step further and enabled us to determine that the chemical composition, sorry, determine the chemical composition of the cytoplasm and the cell membrane that is present in our prokaryotes. We were also able to learn that enzymes and photosynthetic pigments are actually attached to the cell membrane, which is very different to our eukaryotes, where our, in particular, photosynthetic pigments in eukaryotes is enclosed within the membrane in a, in a chloroplast organelle. We learned that respiratory coenzymes are unique to this particular type of organism and different to those in eukaryotes. 
And we also learned that metabolism of some carb carbon compounds is different in archaea in comparison to other organisms. And we'll be having a look in much more detail about the difference between archaea and other types of prokaryotes uh, in a few videos time. We have genetic sequencing where we're able to look at the number of chromosomes within each organism and then see how they fit evolutionarily with other organisms. I'm not sure if evolutionary is a word. Evolutionarily is a word, but it is now. So we're able to sequence the DNA, have a look at the similarities uh, between different organisms and see how closely they're related to one another. And lastly, amino acid sequencing. We know that amino acids join together in order to form proteins, which then carry out a variety of different jobs within organisms. So scientists learned that the amino acid sequence in proteins and the DNA or RNA nucleotides varied between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And they also learned that the nucleotide sequences of the archaea RNA are different to bacteria and other eukaryotic organisms. So as we can see, we went from the very simple light microscope, which allowed us to understand that prokaryotes were unicellular, that they had a cell membrane and a cell wall, all the way through this very advanced technology of amino acid sequencing, where we could actually look at the amino acids that formed the proteins and how they varied between these, these organisms and our eukaryotic organisms. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.